A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Passage taken from the Message Version of the Bible. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You are beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaking, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, But how? I have never slept with a man. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hovered over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son? Old as she is. Everyone called her barren. And here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflections on the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The birth of a new child in a family is always a moment full of joy and hope. But it is also admittedly a difficult moment. The mother goes through a trance that is not easy. The life that is born comes into the world in the midst of pain. The newborn is fragile, weak and demands the total attention of the parents. The joy of the birth will depend also on how far the parents desire for the child. That is why the expectation of the birth is a time of hope but also of concern. Will everything go well? But Mary overcomes her anxieties through faith. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. She had no doubts in this regard. No one had understood God's plan. David, Nathan, Solomon, the kings of Israel, they had not understood it. And all of them had put their dreams in opposition to God and expected God to help them to achieve their dreams. But Mary does not behave like them. She does not put her personal plans before God. She only wants to know what is her role that God intends to entrust to her. And she joyously welcomes his initiative. Like every mother, she would also ask herself questions about the future of the child she was carrying in her womb. And she would not have all the answers. She could only trust the word of God she had received. What she carried in her womb was the work 
of the Holy Spirit of God. What does Mary teach us today? To prepare ourselves to celebrate Christmas is to have an open heart to the newness that God can bring into our lives at any time. Because God continues to be born in our world. God continues to be present among us, sometimes in the most unusual ways, but always for sure among his favorites, the poorest, the simplest, those who have nothing. Blessed are we if we are able to discover that mysterious presence of God near us. Then we will be ready to celebrate Christmas. Well, we do listen to lots of commentaries on the gospel passage. Why not keep this question with you for today? Am I able to discover that imminent presence of God in my family and in the society? Do I celebrate with joy the signs of God's presence and life that I come across? <music>